All right, everybody, this is episode 45 of This Week in Grip, and we've got a tremendous announcement this week. We have our first sponsor, Muscle Farm. And starting next week, you really want to make sure you're listening to This Week in Grip because you'll possibly be able to win free stuff. So, again, next week... Look for an even bigger announcement on what you have to do to win cool stuff. Thank you to Muscle Farm for coming on board the team here at This Week in Grip. And now let's get on with the show. Johnson. And I'm joined, as always, by Alan Hynek and Ricardo Magni, and this is episode 45 of This Week in Grip. <clears throat> Yesterday alone, here in the United States of America, there were three different grip competitions, and we're going to be talking about each one eventually. But before we do that, go back on the channel and make sure you watch episodes 43 and bonus episode number 44, 43, was on the Hands-On Grip Games, which took place on February 3rd. 44 was on my second trip to Dubai and training with Batter and the epic Lane Snook. Make sure as you watch those videos and this one to give each one a like, please. We have a goal set of at least. 10% likes compared to the total number of views that the video gets, so help us out there. And as always, don't forget to use our hashtag, This Week in Grip. Alan, any chance that you were able to check and see what we were at for our hashtag, brother? Yeah, when I first looked, it actually said 992, but then once the pictures loaded up, it was 991. So we've put on almost 30 since our, since our last discussion. That's right, that's right. And that's important, that's very important, because if anyone sees that hashtag, they'll be able to see not only posts related to our show, but also posts that other people have put up with their training feats. And I know it's been a while since we've talked about a lot of the training feats that have been going on, guys, but we're going to be uh, covering those once things slow down a little bit. Like I said, there's a lot of great things going on in GRIP right now, and uh the biggest thing, the most important thing you can do is keep in mind the first rule of grip sport. You tell everyone about grip sport. Help us spread the word. Like I said, there were three big contests yesterday. We're going to focus on one of them in particular because Ricardo Magni happened to be there and happened to have a perfect view of everything going on there. Um, aside from just the, the lady assistant that was changing the weights, I know that I watched a lot of the of the live stream. Got to be an incredible number of people watching the video. I know a couple times there were over 9,000 people watching the video, and it was disheartening to see that many of the people posting were uh, basically hitting on the the girl that were was uh, was handling the weight changes. I was like ready to jump into the my phone and kick some ass because it was so. Uh, Disrespect, disrespectful. I don't know if you were able to see that, Ricardo, but tell us, tell us exactly what was going on at the competition, my man. Dying to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm. I, well, let's go to. I didn't see any of these live stream comments because I was more focused on actually competing in the actual contest. Right. But I will tell you this. First of all, I have to compliment my buddy Clay Edgen. He put on arguably the best contest I've ever been to, and I've competed in now between a powerlifting and grip contests, over 60, maybe 70 contests in my 22 years of doing weightlifting-type contests. And this was probably the very best, and strongman, this is probably the very best contest I've ever been to, uh, of all of them. And I'm not just saying that just because I did well. The whole thing was laid out fantastically. It was well-organized. Uh, everything made sense. Logistically, it was good. 
And uh, and let's look at the viewers. I think the top point was 11,200 people watching the live stream. And guys, this is going to blow you away. But and Clay told me at dinner, I could not believe it. 289,747 people watched it at some point during the day. Right. That's that, that's that is 289,000 people. That is unbelievable. I mean, so let's look at the specifics. So it was California Strongest Hands, Arm Lifting USA's first, uh, you know, contest outside of a Fit Expo. And um, we brought on a few new sponsors. So Ivanko uh, Barbell sponsored the contest, and they donated a set of competition bumper plates. They've actually donated three sets to Arm Lifting USA, so we used one of those for the first time. So some brand new, beautiful bumper plates. Then we had uh, Iron Mind, of course, was sponsoring uh, the best winner in each discipline uh, of their disciplines. They sponsored those events. We had Hand Armor Chalk, which is a new product. I haven't used it yet, but um, they gave samples uh, to every – every competitor, and they provided some sponsorship. So um, Clay had this beautiful banner made up with the new Arm Lifting USA logo, and, uh, and he had shirts there for people, and, and the contest was free to enter. So, I mean, really, we got 40 people lifting. And so that, for me, was exciting because I think outside of the South Jersey contest, this was probably the next best attended con grip contest in the U.S. What do you guys think about that? That sounds about right. Yeah. That's, that's it didn't sound crazy. I don't know, 50, 52 or 54 people, I think, 54. I mean, have we had any other condos that have had 50, any of the national championships with 40 people? No, not that I know of, buddy. Not that I know of. Yeah, so, I mean, there were people everywhere. There were some experienced lifters and some definitely beginners. Mm -hmm. And... So it was, every event was run in the last man standing format, which meant no one would bomb out, right? Everyone could at least get a lift or two in before the bar would go up. And that was important because we wanted the people, even though it made the day a little bit longer, we wanted the people to have a good experience and come back for more. No one, no one wants to bomb out of a contest. So, so for me, that was important. Uh, but it did make for a longer contest. Um, let's see the first uh, oh let, let's tell, tell you who was there I had a delightful experience of picking up and rooming with Arto Gironen from Finland nice and talk about a grip ambassador Arto is a phenomenal human being and um, we had a fantastic time in fact I just left about an hour ago um, he's going to check out the beach right now, see the Pacific Ocean, and uh, and then he flies back uh, this evening, back to Finland. So um, Arto was there. Ode Haugen competed. Um, Clay, of course, competed, even though he was running the event, which is no easy task. Jed, you can comment on that. You know how hard that is to run a contest and then also compete in it. That takes a lot of energy. Oh, yes, absolutely, man, absolutely. Yeah, and and uh, so Clay was was doing double duty there, and then also um, uh, John Matchnick, who a lot of people might not know who John is because he's silent on social media. But let me tell you something: John is one of the most well-rounded grip guys in the United States, and I know that's a big statement to make, but John has no weak events. He's very strong, he's very unassuming, and he's very, very good. So those were, I knew those guys, with myself included, would be the top five. My first order of business was not eating too much dinner on Friday night so I would make weight for the 220s. Because eating with Arto and O, that could, <laughs> very easy to get off course uh, there. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you, last I night we imagine. had... Ar Arto did not like the dinner that we had, so then we went to have a second dinner last night because the first dinner was not good. He wanted better American beef, and Clay sent us to this one restaurant, 
And it was fine. I mean, it wasn't great. And Archer was like, ah, I need more American beef. This is not good. So we we went for dinner number two. Well, so I'm pretty, sh- mentioning- pretty sure I'm not 220 anymore. Without mentioning the, the restaurant, because I don't want any uh, bad karma, what, yeah. what was the what was the entree that he ordered that was no good? Was it a steak? Well, it wasn't. No, it wasn't no good. I think he was expecting like a, a filet mignon or like a New York steak or like a T-bone, and they didn't have anything like this. So he he got so instead he had the barbecue tri-tip. Apparently, Arto does like potato salad, which came with it, or beans. So uh, I ate his potato salad and beans. And then, um, yeah, he, you know, he, he didn't, uh, he just didn't care for it. So then we went and found another place and he had filet mignon and he enjoyed that very much. Nice. So, yeah. But, so we just had two dinners. It's no big deal. Jed, we had plenty of time to kill. So just have the second dinner. Right. So, right. and, and I can tell you that, um, uh, he was definitely well hydrated after eating the second dinner as well. The hydration, he has that under control to, to a very precise level. I've heard some stories about his hydration uh, efforts. Strategies. He through and he yeah, effort, not yes. around with his hydration. Yes, yes, sir. No, 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 di- dialed in, dialed in for sure. Um, yeah, I put it this way. There are plenty of 20-year-old college frat boys that could take notes from Arto's hydration strategies. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Were they? Uh, yeah, I, nah, never mind. I I was gonna ask. Uh, it was gonna have to do with a John Cena movie that I see coming out here pretty soon, but we don't need to go there. Um, yeah. I tell you, uh, uh, Ricardo. Just one last thing before we start talking about the contest here. I'm starting to see yeah. a pattern uh, where you compete and then have two dinners. I think that happened recently in the contest where you competed with Eric Milf, uh, Eric Rusin. Uh, and you had yeah, I did. dinners or two lunches or something like that. You doubled up on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? After you make weight, well, what the hell? Why not? You know, it's, it does take me some discipline. You know, I've shed about 60 pounds of fat. And so, you know, uh, indulge a little bit there afterwards. It's not going to kill me. You know, I, I don't drink or anything like that. So for me, if I'm going to indulge in anything, it's going to be a little food. So um, Absolutely. because I do like to eat. And I, and I still eat like I still eat like I'm closer to 300 pounds than I'm 200 pounds, which can be dangerous. So um, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy eating. So it's yeah, be much the same in April at the Philadelphia contest. You you you, you will. That that will be no problem at all. So especially if you're buying if you're buying Jed, that makes it even tastier. <laughs> oh really? Okay. <laughs> all right. I guess I should start. Uh, Better start a new savings account uh, with. Yeah, with I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. But you know, in all, in all seriousness, yeah, it's, uh, you know, at these contests, it, it's easy to like rush home. But why? Why not socialize with the people? You don't get to see these people very frequently. And and uh, you know, as as I've gotten my own competing under control and I have it where I want it to be, it frees up more time for me to socialize with the people, and uh, a lot of people were asking me questions about, you know, technique, about training, about arm lifting. Um, so it's nice to be able to help people. You know, I do it every day as a teacher, but now I can do it kind of, I mean, you do it as a personal training coach, Jed, but yeah. now I get to do it here and there. And, and so for me, it's very fun. It's just like teaching, but in this case, about weightlifting instead of about science. So it's, it's been, it's fun at the contest. The, the people are very nice. So, yeah, Alan, any questions before we get on to the actual event? No, no, I think let's just get uh, moving forward. All right, so like I said, we had all these body weight categories, 70 kilos, 80, 90, 100, 110, 125, and the supers. And we had for women, uh, 60, 70, 80, and supers, 80, above 80. So plenty of chances for people to compete. And uh, like I said, 40 contestants. I weighed 99.2, so I was right in where I needed to be. And uh, onward, first event, Rolling Thunder. Uh, by the way, I, I will tell you, and you guys will laugh because you're from a much colder climate, but it has been extremely cold in California this week. I told, uh, I made a post, and I said, I think Arto is bringing Finland with him 
you know, at my house on Tuesday, it was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty really? cold for California. I know for you guys, that's nothing, right? Because I'm from New York. So I know for what real winter is like. But it was definitely frosty. It was 28 degrees the Saturday morning in Santa Cruz, which is ridiculously cold because it's right by the water. Um, so Clay's gym was definitely frosty. I mean, I had my sweats on in between all my attempts, for sure. It, it was cold. Um, and I think that affected people took more attempts, which was fine because it was hard to stay warm during the contest. But that did make it a little longer of, a, of an event. But, yeah, Rolling Thunder was good. I, I, I did some warm-ups, and then I hit 80, 85, and 90 kilos. Um, I missed 92 and a half. But the 90 was easier than it was in Los Angeles for me. So my all-time PR is 93 kilos, but I weighed 270 when I did that. So uh, this was, again, I think, good progress. So um, pretty close. Probably could have got 91 or 91 and a half kilos, but that wasn't an option. So I was pretty happy with that. Ode won the event with 102 and a half kilos. He missed 110. Uh, Arto was second with 100 and missed 102 and a half. How many women did you have at the contest, Ricardo? I, it looked like there were like eight or nine, maybe? I think it was double digits, to be honest, but I don't know for sure. Oh, okay. um, I don't have – I told Clay to email me the results sheet, and I'll put it up on the Arm Lifting USA website tonight after dinner. Yeah. But I, I want to say 10 to 12. Um I mean, maybe it was eight or nine. I, I don't have an exact count right off, but it was not like three. I mean, it was definitely yeah, there were a lots. bunch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and not all of them were from Clay's gym. You know, a bunch were from Clay's gym, like four or five of the women. But a bunch were also from, some came from Sacramento, which is two hours away. Some came from uh, San Jose, which is 45 minutes away. And they were from all over. So all over Northern California. Nice. Awesome, man. That's great to see as well. Oh, yeah. And they were really getting after it because the, with the women, the, the, the attempts are very close because they're all lifting more or less very close weights. So the, the competition was actually quite fierce on who would prevail because two and a half kilos in one of their events was the difference between, like, first and fifth place sometimes. It was very close. Wow, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, like I said, Clay made, I think, 95 on Rolling Thunder, missed 100. John Maxick made 95 and missed 100. So I was fifth on Rolling Thunder overall. So I was happy with 90. I wanted 92, but I could tell it just wasn't coming. So, um, I mean, pretty pretty standard. I mean, you know, normal weights uh, lifted on Rolling Thunder. No, no super records, but it was it was fine. Handle was fine. So, any questions about that event? I think the top female Rolling Thunder was 47 and a half kilos. So, right about 105 pounds. I think that was the biggest one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and she's very strong. That, that woman is very strong. I think she's deadlifted 390 in a powerlifting meet, weighing like 150. So, that's pretty good lift. That's pretty pretty big pull. Forty-seven and a half. Okay. So, um, do you recall what was the number that was up for discussion for the women's crush to dust challenge? Yeah, that, I said forty-five, and you said I said yeah, I said forty-five, which is ninety-nine, and you said fifty. It, so far, okay. based on the LA Fit Expo and this one, forty seems like a better number. Um, you know, Randy still hasn't made any motions to implement it at Iron Mind. However, um. Ode and Clay and I have some discussions in order, and we may we, we may have a little something at the Fit Expo for the female competitors there. We we're still fine tuning it, so announcement sure, to sure. be coming. But but we may we may make our own type of a thing like that. Okay, okay. What was the yeah. What was the lowest number pulled on that Rolling Thunder lift for the women? No, I don't I don't know, Alan. I'm Maybe you don't say, recall. Okay, okay. I'm, no, because. Because I, I I don't have the results sheet in front of me, but I I was gonna say maybe 25 or 30 kilos. Oh, okay. But one of the ladies there was 79 years old. 
Ah, okay, okay, all right. Yeah, so I'm I, I, kinda... I think she's in the master's category, I would think. Okay, okay. I'm just kind of trying to keep some, some mental track of some of these things just for just for purposes of that discussion we had once upon a time. So just to see oh, how yeah. this all wraps up one day. So cool. Yeah, Good 50, information. 50 kilos is too much. I mean, put it this way. Because, and here's why, Alan. The handle at 60 millimeters, 2 and 3 eighths inches, is too big for the women. Really, they would benefit from a 2-inch handle because of just simply they're smaller with smaller hands for most of the women. So, I mean, look, when the 390-pound deadlifter, she can't deadlift 50 kilos on Rolling Thunder, it tells you that why. Is it because she's weak? No. It's because her hand is not big enough in proportion to the device to do it. I mean, my hand isn't even big enough as big as I'd like it to be to have a higher result on Rolling Thunder. Sure, you know, sure. and I'm, you know, 6'3", was... and, you know, she's not 6'3". <laughs> I was actually I was actually just looking back at these notes. Um I actually thought one twenty five. So I was I was I was very high compared to what, yeah, what we're seeing on some of these. So but, yep. put it this way, the only the only two people I've seen pull anywhere close to that are Amy Waddles and Danielle Curry. And I think that was at the twenty fourteen San Jose Fit Expo. And uh, Amy Waddles and Danielle Curry, I don't know if you're familiar with either one of those women, but they're both, both very, very large, strong women. And and I'm going to use very large um, with capital letters. They're very big. So I'm, I'm going to say they're, they're much closer to 300 pounds than 200 pounds. They're very large. So Amy okay. Waddles is best in person that I saw was 63 kilos. So that's 140. And Danielle Curry did 58 kilos, which is not – it's like 128, I think. Okay. So, sure. And they're, they're, you know, like I said, closer to 300 than 200 pounds. So right, 125 right. for a regular or a somewhat not regular woman is, is a fantastic mark. A very, very yeah, good lift. Little- little ambitious yeah okay okay yeah all right well cool well, as as we see that i guess the hub get contested more too i was looking i know 35 pounds was kind of the the consensus before so i'm just curious what what people are pulling on these on average so well be good. Alan, guess guess what the next event was okay let's hear it <laughs> the Ironmind hub perfect segue right. Alan. the hub was there the next event so my hub in training uh, we kind of stagnated a little bit. I told you that. I, I implemented some a um, uh, little different training right at the end. Uh, I want to thank my my boy Michael Thomas, the Gresham Gripper. He gave me a couple of tips that I implemented with a very good success. And so, um, so yeah. Again, it was cold, so I just did all my warming up right there on the platform with everyone else. So I did twenty. 25, 27 and a half, 30, and then I made a PR of 32 and a half kilos, which is 71.6 pounds. And it was easy. It was easy. And, and then, then um, what was the weight again, Ricardo? I'm sorry. 71, 71.6 pounds, 32 and a half kilos. <clears throat> now, are these brand so, new implements right out of the package, Ricardo? Uh, no. These. No, these are clazed implements that he has in the gym. Not brand new okay. for this contest. The plates okay. were right. brand new, but, but not the implements. And right. these plates that we use are the calibrated um, Ivanko bumper plates for, like, Olympic lifting contests, like USA Olympic lifting. Like, these are right on plates. These are not, you know, from plate against sports. These are very good bumper plates. Very good weight. Sure, so, sure. I mean, we weighed a few of them just to see on Clay's uh, calibrated scale, and each one was right on, so we just stopped weighing them because there was no need. They were perfect. Sure. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I was very happy with that, uh, 71 and a half. I then went to 77, and, and it was too much on this day. So um, I, I feel like if I had the opportunity to take an intermediate jump, like not the five and a half, pound jump but maybe a two and a half pound jump i would have made it so um, oh were you very, were you limited on the on the jumps you could take 
Is that how yeah, they did because, that? Like, yeah, but so uh, Clay made it clear in the rules beforehand. So on Rolling Thunder, we were taking uh, two and a half kilo jumps, and that took a long time. And then in Hub, we were also taking uh, two and a half kilo jumps. And then in Napalm's Nightmare, we took 10 kilo jumps. And then in uh, in uh, Little Bighorn, we took two and a half. And then Silver Bullet was obviously one shot and you're done. Sure, sure. Yeah, two and a half kilo jump on a hub, that's a, that's a monster. Yeah, you know, but the contest was kind of, it was, it was wearing on a little bit. Sure. And at that point, there were still uh, three people left in the contest, me, Clay, and Arto. And uh, Arto made 35. And then Clay easily... Uh, made 35 and then clay made 37 and a half uh which is 83 pounds fantastic lift well wow. uh, arto missed 37 and a half and then clay went for what was a record we didn't realize that i guess john mccarter was busy in new jersey uh doing mm. some hub lifting but um clay went clay went for 41 and a quarter which would have beaten harry tolan's record he got it off the ground, but it was a little too much for him on that day. Oh wow! Still so, getting there under it. That's that's a solid. That's oh for sure. Yeah, I have it on video. Yeah. He he definitely levitated the thing, and it just it, it it just you know like I said, a little too much for him on that day. So sure. thirty-seven five was a PR for him in a contest, uh, for sure. And Arto commented that compared to the hubs in Finland, Clay's hub was very very oily, very slippery. Our, that's the quote from Arto. So, um, you know, Arto and I chalked the hell out of that thing before the hub, but it was, I think it had gotten so much use, you know, and that was one of the negatives with 40 people lifting. The implements got so much use that they got a little slippery towards the end when some of the, the bigger guys were going, like me and Arto. And I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the fact that you had a lot of first-time uh, competitors that did not clean their hands properly too, because you see that a lot in competitions where yes. new new people grab it and there's like a uh, a grease slick on the on the implement. So yeah, and I felt like some of the people almost used like some kind of hand cream or something like right before the meet. Like what what are we doing here, people? But you're right, Chad. Oh, yeah. You're 100 percent right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is yeah. what it is though. So yep. yeah, it, it is. So you, you everyone lifted on the same device. I mean that's for sure. So, um, yeah, so, again, I was ecstatic right there because I pulled the thing easily, and I, I, I was, you know, I have to check my video, which, of course, I haven't done yet, but um, but I, I may have broken 30, 77 off the ground. I don't even know. I was just so focused on lifting the darn thing that, that it just couldn't quite get there. It may have come up a little bit. Video, will, we will see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then went to the third event, you had your favorite, the Napalm's Nightmare. And um, it was o- Ode Haugen destroyed planet Earth on that. I don't know. Did you see his lift that was posted on Facebook? Yeah, that was so is, I had the worst luck in history. Most of the time where, when I tuned into the live stream during breaks and what we were doing here at the house, it was like either nothing going on or a lot of people that I didn't know. So It was the uh, new lifters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, I wasn't able to see a lot of the, the biggest action on the day. But I did see the very end of Napalm's Nightmare where Ode was lifting. Uh, that was one of the ones where I, I got some some of the major action. I didn't see any of the drama with the hub. In fact, I didn't see any of the hub at all. And I saw yeah. only the very beginning of the Rolling Thunder uh, was a little bit busy yesterday doing stuff, but yeah, I did see the Napalm's Nightmare, and you said that you guys were doing, I believe, uh, ten kilo jumps on the Napalm's Nightmare. Yeah, and to be honest, that came back to haunt me because um, so my PR in training was one ninety five, so four twenty nine, and um, so I wound up doing one eighty one, one ninety one, and I missed two oh one. And I felt like if I had uh, 196, you know, a five kilo jump, I felt like I would have gotten it. And um, 
Ode beat me in the overall by half a point. Mm. 441 to 440 and a half for me. So for me, half a second on the silver bullet, uh, one pound more somewhere, and I would have beaten the, the, the old the king. So that, that, that was, uh, it was a little close. But whatever, that's how the ball bounces. And um, I will tell you, though, the percentage-based scoring is fantastic for making it a good event because Ode is not good at hub and he's not good at silver bullet. But when you lift 241 kilos on Napalm's Nightmare, um, you, you, he got himself back in the game by hitting a grand slam. It's like in the bottom of the seventh inning for Ode because there's still two events left. He hits a grand slam, and now he's in first place. You know what I mean? Right. It is just fantastic. So the percentage-based scoring, you're never out of it, which makes yeah. the contest extremely fun, and it makes the athletes really want to push the envelope because you, you, you're you rewarded for being good, and I think that's important. So I, I, was, I was absent from the call when you guys talked about that the last time. That's actually yeah. how the majority of – uh, North American grip sport competitions are scored. Um, I think, uh, you know, King Kong is strongman scoring. And yep. there's a couple other of the big competitions that I think you've done that were King Kong scoring. But almost all of them are uh, presented percentage-based scoring. And for me, in my opinion, that's absolutely the way to go. It's absolutely oh, yeah. ready to go. Makes for a much better competition when you're awarded for what you actually did. So we don't need to go into that too much detail. I think I actually isolated that that portion of the, that talk that you and Alan did, and it's on the channel. Correct. So if they're looking for, yeah, yeah, correct. If anyone wants to know more about percentage-based scoring, it's definitely the way to go. Check that out. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, it was great. And so Ode brought himself back with that one. Um, and he lifted the thing clearly, I mean, smashed it into the pins. And he almost made 251, which would have been 553. So I guess prior, you know, not in the contest, but Brian Hunsaker had pulled 503. And so O did 541 or 2 or whatever it converted to. I mean, just ridiculous. But not a surprise, he's the king of thick bar. So, um, yeah, he... he he was on fire. Unfortunately for Arto, he had some his back started cramping in the middle of the of the of the contest uh, right there during the heavy event, the nightmare. And so he only made 201 and that definitely affected him for the overall. Um so yeah. Clay made 221, which is I, I guess right about what you made, Chad, maybe a few pounds more. Uh, I think that's like 487. Yeah. So I guess you made 480 at your contest. So, yeah. you know, you and Claire are in the same ballpark on that one. Uh, I, was, I was a little disappointed in that one. But to be honest, in training, it hadn't gone super. I think I overdid too many Napalm's Nightmares for too long. I'm a little burned out on it. I'm going to let it rest for a little while. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's a great tool. I mean, I've, I, can't, I can't say it enough. I should be on the cover of the – the advertisement for the thing because I keep telling people to buy it, but it, and Arto is bringing one back to Finland, Chad. You may know that, yeah, but if you awesome. don't, mm-hmm. he's bringing one back. So prepare to see some European destruction over there. They're gonna get after it. They, the guys are already asking me, does Arto have the nightmare? Make sure he brings it back. Right. Um, so I appreciate you handing that, you handed that off to him, right? It was shipped to you. Remember? It's Clay. It was shipped to Clay, but I made sure. Uh, Arto has it. He's, it's in his bag right now. Uh, yeah, I do appreciate everything you said about it. I actually just made a post on Instagram. Actually, all I did was like copy what Luke put up, and there's three more that will be going out tomorrow, uh, and they're all going overseas. So they're, awesome. they're, it's definitely taken over the, the world of Thick Bar. What did the newer athletes have to say about it? maybe some of the women or some of the men that had never used it before. Did they have any feedback on it? Oh, they loved it. They thought it was cool. I mean, everyone knew how to use it because all the people, even the newer ones, almost all of them have done some form of deadlift. 
I will say this. The only negative is this, and I did see it, and I've, it happened to me as well. When you pull it so hard that it spins out of your hand, you can kind of bang the crap out of your hand, right? Because, I mean, I, I was pulling for maximum because I knew I needed that 201. And you'll see on the video when I post it, you know, hopefully tonight I'll have time to make it. You'll see that, I mean, that thing, there's quite a recoil. It's almost like if you were shooting a big gun with a big kick. Um, I mean, it doesn't do that with an actual deadlift. So that's about the only negative because the handle is so spinny. Yeah. You you can definitely over pull and, and bruise your, the tips of your fingers a little bit. And I saw a couple people do that who are really trying to, you know, get after it. Maybe some of the better deadlifters, maybe someone like me, who's a very good deadlifter, but maybe their thick bar isn't quite as good as their overall uh, back and hip and the hamstring strength, right? Right, yeah. And so, I mean, for me, my thick bar is, it's the wrist and the hands that are catching up to the rest of my body, right? For some people on thick bar, they're just not very strong, and they just lift it, and when they can't pick it up anymore, it's because they can't pick it up anymore. You know, if, if for me, it's the hand, you know, the the gripping, which is the whole point. Sure. So, so yeah, so uh, that's about the only negative. I saw a couple people kind of shaking their hands afterwards, but, but no, they liked it, and it was there's no learning curve. I think that's the kind of the key. You just pick it up, and I think some people like picking it up standing on blocks. That's what I like to get more legs into it. Sure. Some people are better just standing still, just right there. Mm-hmm. But other than that, the, the people loved it. They, they liked that event. That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah, we saw, we even, in testing, we even saw that depending on what height you pulled it from on the on the crane scale, that you would get a, a different result. A different result. Yeah, yeah. If you were pulling really, really low, it would, it would give a different result than if you were pulling really, really high. And it might not necessarily be the same for everybody. It might be more along the lines of what's optimal for you. So I, I, That's exactly how I feel, Jed. I feel exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. I, I could generate more force standing on the five-inch block. Right. Cool. So, yeah. Alan, any comments on the napalm's nightmare now that you have one? Any questions? No, no. Actually, I was hoping at some point we'll get to circle back to the to the hub. I, we didn't get to uh, bring up how the how the women performed on that. Okay. Well, uh, I will tell you, Brittany, Brittany Rayner, one of Clay's uh, protégés, she pulled 47 pounds. Holy on cow. Iron Mind Hub. Okay. Oh, yeah. Absolutely destroyed it and went after, I want to say, 51 or 52 or something like that and, and had a bona fide attempt at it. She's just 12 pounds away from the record I mean, that Mervy just did. So one of Clay's uh, – pro- and this woman has only been – check this out. She, she's uh, grown up on a horse ranch and done, like, horses and stuff her whole life, so – I'm sure lifting heavy bags of feed and that kind of thing. But she uh, has only been lifting weights at Clay's since August. That's it, August. So, wow. And this was her second contest of any type ever. She's never done a powerlifting meet. She, her first contest was the L.A. Fit Expo. And I was like, wow, you're really jumping into the fire here in L.A. So, um, yeah, with a little more experience, I mean, I mean, 47 is a fantastic lift. Maybe it was even 48. I, I don't have, again, I don't have the result sheet in front of me, Alan. So, sure, sure. The monster, monster lift by Brittany Rayner on the, on the Iron Mind Hub. And many of the women were in the low 30s, right around where we said, around 15 kilos. Um, I think 15 kilos would be the sweet spot for that to crush the dust. Uh, there were several women in there, in that range. Cool. Okay. Good, good, good information. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's that's where we were there. A nightmare. I think the biggest lift on nightmare was by one of Clay's lifters uh, at around 275. It might have been 264. It might have been 275 by the same woman, Cat, who did the the um, 47 and a half kilo rolling thunder. She's good on thick bar. Nice, yeah, that's that's a good, that's a solid number for sure. Jed, what do you think about that? A woman pulling uh, 120, 125 kilos on the nightmare. 
That's phenomenal. I mean, that's more than some of the men pulled at uh, at your contest, me, your so. grip games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and she weighs she weighed a one sixty four body weight at this one. Wow. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's, wow. she's that's strong. strong. Yep. She's very strong. Very strong. Yeah. So, yeah, her name's Kat Gerard. Very strong. Uh, she's a personal trainer at Clay's gym, maybe at some other gyms too, and in Santa Cruz, and uh, very, very talented. Very, very, very bright future should she continue to want to continue to do gripping. I think she likes powerlifting a lot, but I think she liked the challenge of picking up the new stuff. And uh, she was also quite good on the gripper, Clay. Uh, as you'll see, Clay has taught her well on the gripper, Chad, when we get there. Pretty good result on the gripper. Um, yeah, so fourth event was Little Bighorn. I was excited for this because I've never done Little Bighorn in a meet before. I've never really trained it consistently except for January, starting in January. So I've only trained the thing for about six weeks consistently. You know, I've done Excalibur and I've done V-Bar, but Little Bighorn, because it's slanted, is a little bit different animal, as you guys are aware. Any, any comments on that, Little Bighorn versus a V-Bar? I agree it's completely different. Um, I guess I, I perform equally as poorly on, on both of them. So that's my, my statement there, I guess. That's, that's your contribution. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I never pulled – I don't pull anything I would consider respectable on the on the V-bar and, uh, and the little bighorn. I've just never been able to – I just can't warm up to it, you know. I, I actually have a yeah. couple for the purposes of doing, like, uh, chin-ups and stuff. And that's right. all the fun I get out of doing it is with that. <laughs> Otherwise, wrapping go. it up to a pin, it's just it's just not fun. It rips out of my hands. It bangs into everything. I just it, it, I just don't yeah. like it. <laughs> yeah. Every every lift yeah, well, is like a failure. Yeah. Oof. Well, that's not good. But um, uh, Jed, any comments on Anvil, a little big one? Well, I'm I'm with Alan. Both of them give me a lot of a lot of trouble. I, I do, I would say I actually do like the vertical bar more just because it's more consistent. I feel like, ah. I feel like the element of the carabiner with the little big horn can make things uh, a little bit unpredictable. Uh, in right. That the, depending on how it's sitting, you might be able to get a good rigging and a, re, a really good torque with the implement. And, and yes. if it changes at all, and especially if you're doing like a, a a triple or maybe a set of five or something like that, I find that I may have to even relocate where my feet are in order to get that same lock on the implement. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So I, you know, I try to avoid them as, as both of them as much as possible, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's turning into a favorite of mine uh, because now I think I finally uh, mastered how to squeeze it for my hand shape. Uh, how to squeeze the thing because it's tapered. That had been kind of throwing me off a little bit for because I wasn't training it regularly. So um, uh, I, I had a good result with it. So I, I wound up doing uh, 70, 75, 77, and 80 kilos. So uh, my PR before LA was 71 and a half kilos, um, and I missed 82 and a half. Um, so I ended with 176, which is pretty good for putting about 20 pounds on the lift in six weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's very good. And, and uh, again, by the end of the time we were using it, the, the, the horn itself was very slippery. It, it, it felt very good in the beginning, but after people used it for about, I don't know, 90 minutes straight, 75 minutes straight, it got pretty slippery. And uh, Arto said the same thing because we both lifted about 10 kilos less than we thought we would based on training. Um, and I think just simply the implement got a little slippery, a little hand cream or something, who knows, and uh, a lot of sweat. Who knows what was on there, but it was, it was slippery at the end. So, yeah, because when I lifted 70 kilos, I thought, oh, I'm going to do 90 for sure, maybe 85. Then when I got to 80, I was like, whew. That that got slippery real fast. So with more practice on it, I'll be I'll be in great shape for the event in Finland when I go. 
just need more practice, more time with it. Well, I think 20 pounds added on it is huge in just that is. a month and a half. In six weeks, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I was very, very pleased with that. So I'm going to continue the training I was using with that, and, um, you know, hopefully it keeps working. Cool. So, yeah, Arto won the event with 90, was it 92 and a half kilos? I think he won the event with 92 and a half. So, um, yeah, I tied with Ode. Don Matchnick did 85 kilos. The Clay did 90, I think. And then missed. And then Arto went for a big one, like 95 and missed. So, um, and it was just slippery. So Arto was a little disappointed because he was hoping to do 100 there. And that would have put him, it would have given him a lot of points relative to Ode in the uh, overall because Ode had beaten him so badly in the uh, Napalm's Nightmare. Mm -hmm. So then it all came down to one of your faves, Jed the Silver Bullet. Uh -huh. yep. And that's been, that's been one of my favorites lately, too. And, Alan, just uh, for your information, most of the women were using the trainer. Uh, we had all 10 Iron Mind grippers there ready to go. And one, one caveat is that none of these grippers were fresh out of the package. So um, we, we just used the grip grippers that Clay has there in the gym. Nothing's been tampered with, but we realized that they're not brand new out of the package. So quick disclaimer right there. Okay, yeah, yeah, that well, it can make a difference, but uh, you know that's good to know. Good to know. I mean, uh, with with non out of the package grippers, I was able to do over thirty seconds on a number four back in like twenty fourteen. So it definitely makes a difference, but it's still freaking hard, no matter what they are. Right. Yeah, and I think just along the disclaimer, because the reality is this: as arm lifting grows, not everyone is always going to have brand new, fresh out of the package grippers. Um, you know, if you're competing in – Hello? Ricardo? Alan? I think we lost him. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Oh. oh. Maybe Ricardo's actually driving from Santa Cruz back to his place, so he may have gone behind a mountain and lost cell service. So I'm sure he'll be back on in just a moment. And one of the one of the other things I wanted to bring up is that we actually have a sponsor for this week in grip now, Alan. Oh, let's hear it. Um, I don't have all the details, but uh, Muscle Farm, M U S C L E P H A R M, oh. <laughs> is coming aboard as a sponsor for this week in grip, and that is going to start with next week's episode. And uh, there's some actions that the listeners will have to take, but if they take the actions that we ask for, they could be uh, in the running for free supplements from from Muscle Farm. So, and I just heard the ding. So, hey, I'm, like back. I'm back. I'm back. Yep. Yeah. Back with us. That's good. Sorry, sorry, guys. Driving through the middle of nowhere right now, and so uh, maybe this call got dropped real quick. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, but, yeah, Jed, if you're going to go to Philly and you're going to attempt the number four world record, make sure you let me know, and I'll make sure we have a new grippers uh, on hand for that activity. Just well, let me know. Um, I, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, it's going to depend on – where I end up being in April depends entirely on this crazy finger, man. It's coming along, but, I mean, just, just hanging from a bar with two hands in Dubai made it hurt. So. Oh, boy. I, just never know. I mean, I'm down to like 50 pounds uh, on the on the hub right now. It's like I'm building Ooh. big time on, on yeah. The lifts. So, yeah, yeah. Well, well this, whatever the case may be, just just give me at least a week's notice. I mean, you know, I wouldn't have to worry about the entry deadline. If you let me know a week ahead of time, we'll make sure we get the gripper to you. Sounds great, buddy. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard for us to get a brand new one. You know, if you tell me two days beforehand. That that's not enough time. No, yeah. Get a brand new one there. Fully understood. Yeah. And I, I plan yeah, yeah. on going no matter what right now. It's just what numbers I put up are, are going to be dependent on that finger. Yeah, well, I, I had the same injury or maybe slightly not as bad. I don't know. But it, it, it took me three full months to, to get 100 days to get back to normal. It, it's no joke. Right. So, 
Yeah. Well, anyway, back to the gripper, Alan. Most of the women were using the the, the, the trainer, the new people. They could do the trainer with no problem. Um, some of the stronger women were using the point five, and then the same girl, Kat, she used the number one and held it for uh, over 20 seconds, I believe. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was very good. Um, now, Amy Waddles has the record with the number two for 45 seconds. That's the Iron Mind record. But again, for someone, you know, first arm lifting contest, the number one silver bullet for a woman is no joke. No, that, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, so we, we did it in order of body weight to do the silver bullet at the end. So it did give the guys after me a little bit of an advantage because I was the lightest one of the top five. So I did, they got to see what I went first. And I was debating back and forth, do I do the number four? Or do I just get a solid time with the three and a half? And, and I opted just to get a solid time with the three and a half so that I just had a meet PR with the three and a half. Uh, and I had uh, my technique was dialed in. I, I held it for 12.84 seconds, which was a uh, good success at the end of five events. I was happy with that. Good job, man. Yeah, and, and I'll be honest, I felt like I, I could have given the gripper with a, now mind you, a, a parallel set, a very good closed attempt because I, when I went to set it, I overclosed it and I had to open up my hand a little bit to put the bullet in there and I was a little surprised. I was, <laughs> I, I was shocked actually. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is going to be a great hold because I, I closed it too far on the set. So, um... You know, and as you know, Jed, from being way more experienced at grippers than me, it does take some energy then to back up the bus a little bit and open your hand up a hair, and then you got to reclose it to clamp down the the bullet. It's it, it's a, it's an art. It's not an accident. It's definitely something you practice. Agreed or disagreed? I I'll tell you, man. I actually prefer going down deeper than the than the silver bullet. I feel like I get a better a better grip with it. Right. That way. Um, okay, but I would imagine, like anything else, there's variants that uh, once you have a little experience with it, you know what you need to do in order to to have it down. Yeah, usually I get it right where it needs to go. The bullet just slides right in, perfect, and stand up, and you know, put it on the little line, and off we go. But I, I overdid it a little bit. So, uh, in in hindsight, it would have been nice to have tried the number four yesterday. I'm very certain I could have done it, but whatever. I'm very happy with the. Uh, the 3.5 for 12.84 seconds, um, uh, certainly a solid time for me to beat in the future for a, a contest uh, PR. So, cool, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Especially Thank at the you. end of this yeah. long contest. Holy. Yeah, it happened around, I mean, we started at 9, and uh, I was doing the gripper around 4.15. So it was a, a little, Oh, wow. Well, remember, 40 people, unlimited attempts, it, it, it took a while. We were done at five o'clock with the whole thing, awards and everything. So, right. um, and, and again, because it was cold and because we had so many new people, it, the meet did take a while. However, I would much rather have that than 10 people where we're done in three hours and you don't see all the joy of all these new people uh, enjoying the activity. Right. So for me, I'll, I'll take, I mean, I'm already, going to be there all day anyway so for me another few hours isn't an issue but um but yeah let's get to the fireworks so then uh arto goes and arto was like i said he was a little bit mad and he doesn't really practice grippers he hates grippers he picks up the number four and holds it for 3.36 3.62 seconds hmm. and then he absolutely just flips out and goes crazy <laughs> yelling and screaming and just <laughs> absolutely goes bonkers. I mean, beyond bonkers. It was awesome. And then Clay does the number four for 23 seconds and change. Holy cow. Yeah, I saw that. At, at the end of the contest, after running it and emceeing it and competing and organizing and cleaning up, I mean, setting up, unbelievable. So... I look forward to see what Clay does when he goes to Russia here in May uh, and competes against Dimitri and the other people there in the number four. I mean, 
it was so easy for him. He was talking while he was doing the bullet. It yeah, was. He was. He was making faces and stuff like that. Yeah. Dude, he was locked in. It was fantastic. I couldn't believe it. Where did that so, land in terms of the current world record on that? That doesn't sound too far Jesse, off. Jesse Pinion's record is 19.12, so it exceeds it by four seconds. However, sure. not a brand new gripper. Right. So, like right. Ted said, it's a variable. However, I think the more and more arm lifting contests we put on with Silver Bullet, it's unreasonable to expect people to to do that. And our leaderboards will reflect that, that not all grippers are brand new grippers. And that's, and not all, hey, your number four, Jed, my number four, Clay's number four, we, you and I know they're all a little bit different. They're metal. They're not identical. And uh, it's hard to compare silver bullet results from contest to contest as it is. That's exactly why we don't track them on on our on our uh, stats board. Right. Well, we're we're going to have it on with the USA simply to give people an idea of what others are doing, and not for any other reason. So, um, you know, give people targets and goals. Uh, a number of people commented they love the website, they love the, seeing the leaderboards, and I will update those tonight. Uh, once Clay emails me the results, and who knows, they could already be sitting here on my phone as I drive home. So, I know you guys said you only had an hour for the call, so I know we're getting close. Anything else that I can talk about or help with or explain? I mean, it was a fantastic contest. Oh, you covered everything in good detail, man. It was definitely a good contest. I liked what I saw. I had, I had a great time. I just wish I could have sat there and watched the whole entire thing. It ended up being about the same amount of total time as what we had here in Wysox a few weeks back, but you guys had, like, twice as many competitors. So, you guys... Yeah, I know. I listened, I listened to your episode and Alan's episode. I haven't heard the bonus episode yet. I'll do that after the call, but I listened to that episode when I was driving up, and it sounds like you guys had a great event, Jed. Um, yeah. Sounds like there were some great performances. Uh, I hope this Storm guy comes back and uh, continues to compete because it sounds like he's quite talented. Um, yeah. So yeah, it sounds yeah. like a good time. Luke and you all had great numbers. A good time had by all. So yeah, sounds man. fantastic. Joe Sullivan too. Yeah. Yep. Great lift. So yeah, no. yeah, Alan. Any any comments or more questions about the the contest that I can help with? No, no. I I would have. I wish I could have actually seen a lot more of that. My uh, my day started off kind of kind of crummy. I wound up uh, in the emergency room with my daughter getting some stitches put in her hand. So Ooh, that was oh, no. how uh, that was how my Saturday was spent. So I only was caught she training some. Up? No, <laughs> it was a, a sledding casualty. Yep, heading down the hill. Um, oh. wound up hitting something, getting ejected from the sled. The sled broke, and she uh. She gashed her hand. It took uh, took eight stitches. It was like uh, nearly a four centimeter gash. It looked like a shark tooth right out of the palm of her hand. Wow. So, yep. Yep. So there was a, there was a few hours gone. Not expected. No, that's not not the way to start the day. How old is she? Ten. Yeah, I hope she recovers quickly. Sick and injured kids are the absolute worst. So I hope hope she recovers quickly and gets back to her activities. At yeah, least she can yeah. train the stub with the other hand. That's right, right. <laughs> yep, yep. So she'll bounce right back, I'm sure. Yeah, oh. uh, that stinks. Well, keep us posted on that, buddy. Yep, all right. Yeah. Well, Jed, any other questions or comments from you? I mean, overall, Clay won the contest with 471 and a half points. Arto, 470. Missed by one and a half points. Then there was Ode Haugen with 440. One and me with 440 and a half, and then John Matchnick at 415. That's the first time I've ever beaten him, and we've gone up against each other probably six times. Um, so that he's very good. After the contest, I'll tell you this, Jed. Just so you, I, I don't know. Do you know John or Alan? Do you guys know John? Who he is? I can't I'm not think, familiar with that name. I can't think of who of who he is at all for some okay, reason. Yeah, because he, he's, he's like. Name. He's anonymous on social media. He watches all the stuff but doesn't put anything up. So I'll give you an idea of his benchmark, base, baseline strength after the event. But, I mean, he won the Anaheim Fit Expo. 
he was second a couple of years ago in L.A. to Alexei Tukalov at the Fed Expo. I mean, he's he's very good. So after the contest, this is after the the now it's after five o'clock. John picks up the inch for the first time. Mm. Does a blob transfer for the first time in midair, and grabs a pair of Clay's milled 45-pound Yorks. Not only picks them up with his right hand, but then gets the bright idea, and he does a 360-degree pass around his back with the plates. <laughs> wow, he's got talent. So that's all after the contest. Yeah. So he how big is, of a guy is he? Um, about the same as me, six three, but he's about I think he weighed two seventy at the contest. Okay, okay, good size dude. A little bit bigger hands than me, maybe eight and a quarter inch hands. Okay. So no no small guy by any means. He's you know, maybe he's a half inch taller than me or we're about the same, I guess. Uh something like that. So yeah, he's he's a big dude and he's very, very, very good. So yeah, you'll see his name in the results. He just doesn't travel a lot. In yeah. fact, he lives he lives 30 minutes away from me and never comes over to train with me. And we're friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he works nights as a respiratory therapist at a hospital, and he works weird hours. And, and I told him, come over. And then Arto was like, Arto never heard of him. Arto was blown away by how good he is. And Arto was like, where do you live near Ricardo? And then I told him how close he lives. And then Arto started scolding him for not coming over. Mm. So maybe he'll come over now. I don't know. Maybe he needed a scolding from a 360-pound Finnish giant to come over. But John is immensely talented. He's 38 years old. He's got a little baby. He was like a year and a half old. So that does make his training a little less, um, a little more erratic. But I will tell you, uh, he, he did bring up the Living Legends contest next year. So maybe maybe we'll all take out a field trip to that one. I, I know Archo is considering that, uh, and we, we explained it to Ode. So then Ode was like, oh, tell me about the event. And and I guess Ode likes sledgehammers, so he Ode may come too. Wow. So that may be quite, quite the throwdown. Sweet, man. Oh, yeah, that'd be epic. Yeah, Jed, this is a serious question. On that sledgehammer setup, yeah. um, is is there – and you may or may not be integral in planning this thing. I honestly don't know. But is there going to be some way that regular people like me can mimic that, or, or is there going to be more information as we get closer? Because I am I have limited experience with sledgehammers, and that would be something that in order for me to compete against you guys, I would obviously need to practice and get that kind of a setup. Well – the which what is the implement what is what is it because i guess maybe i didn't realize there was going to be a sledgehammer in there or i forgot is it the double okay yeah it's a double thing they appear to be screwed together somehow oh. bolted together yeah and uh i think there's seven events at this contest this is a big contest yeah this that, so. that equipment that that lever device is no problem uh it's just Oh really? I, I mean, I could send you the measurements sometimes. It, it's really just uh, connected with two giant bolts. And oh really? Yeah, it's it's not a it's not that's not a hard make whatsoever. The top oh, really? part would be welding the the loading bars onto the heads of the sledgehammers, which is where you would put the weights. That's not something hard for someone who does welding. Well, I have a I have I have a weld I have access to well welding guys I have an equipment guys no problem for that right. yeah I just don't know how to do the I, I don't what I I need to become more educated on what those events are and then maybe maybe that can be a topic uh, maybe in a month or two months or three months we we can get more information on that once those things are finalized and maybe we can do a little build up on that for a, a show for sure absolutely that sounds great are you are you planning on going to that one, Jed? Yeah, I believe so. I think I'll go to that one. Yeah. Alan, are you going to attend that one? No, I don't. I don't think so. But it's, there's there's still plenty of time yet. I was actually just on Gripboard's site right now, trying to find out information on that. But I'm I don't know if that just got buried somewhere or what. I'm not it's able posted, to. It's posted in the FBBC section on the Gripboard. Ah, that's where I'm going wrong. 
subtopic of 2019 living legends. So I'll have to check yeah, that so, out. I so, wanted to see here. So the contest is going to be a Friday and a Saturday, apparently. It's going to have grippers, uh, uh, sledgehammer, some anvils, uh, dump inch dumbbells, blobs. I mean, some of these events are not my good events, so I need to start getting up to speed on some of these ones. So if I'm going to go to it, because, like I said, some of these events are, are very bad for me. So... Slim hammer levering. Plenty of time to practice. Interesting. I'm lo- I'm just I'm just glancing through some of these things right now. Yeah, I think you know I think Gil Goodman's made up a couple of those those double sledgehammers too with the uh, with the adapters on it for throwing plates on. I think that's in one of his custom equipment sections. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I'll have to I'll have to look at that. I know he's yeah, done a lot I need of that to look type of more, those type of mods. In more depth. Do you, do you already have that thing built yet? Yeah, I actually got one several years ago. I, I believe in 2012 is the first time he ran that event. And I got it made with 20s instead of 16s because I didn't want to have I, – I, at the time, I didn't have a lot of micro plates to load with. So I wanted to just do with the, the 20s. So, yeah, I, I have one. It's got a lot that of – sounds- that sounds very heavy. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy, but what I do is I just choke up on it for the first couple attempts, and then I'm able to get, get warmed up. Ah, I see. I see. That makes sense. Yeah, and then as you get warmed up, you move down the stick. That makes sense. That's correct. Yeah. Well, guys, let me know if we have any more questions about this one. I don't want to hold you guys up all day. I mean, I still have plenty of time where I can – discuss stuff in the car i'm still more than an hour away from my house so i have plenty of time but i know you guys don't because you have families and other things they're working on today yeah well we appreciate you calling in while you're driving man and hopefully it made your your trip more more enjoyable well anytime i talk to you guys it's fun so absolutely yeah and and i agree with jed the idea of spreading the grip to, to more people i think that that was a fun activity for me this weekend is being able to uh, uh, spread some of my passion. You know, you guys know I get fired up. Um, so being able to share some of that with the other people was, was really uh, delightful. Yeah, man, you got great passion about it, and uh, you always do a good job with everything. You're a true ambassador yourself, my man. Well, we're I'm trying. You know, it'll be great to compete out in Philly and, to meet you in person and Luke and uh, Joe yeah. Sullivan, John Stepien. You know, we have quite a – I haven't posted it yet. That's that's next for this week, but I'll post the entry list. <laughs> There's quite a talented group of people competing in this one. Cool, man. Cool. Well, I think yeah. uh, I think next in the next call we'll try to cover some of the, some of the other – Canada. Place. Yeah, Canada and, and New Jersey, then, yeah. Then we'll, start, we'll be starting to ramp up on that. Like I said, we got a, a new sponsor, Muscle Farm. I'm going to have more information on that for next week's call. Oh, and then also, fantastic. yeah, and also I wanted to stick in there that we, Luke and I got together. We have plenty of Napalm's Nightmares in stock. So if you've been thinking about getting one, now's the time to jump on it. So uh, just send either me or him a PM or an email or message on Facebook or through Instagram, whatever of those avenues that works best for you, get a hold of us and we can set everything up. That's it for episode 45 of This Week in Grip, everybody. Make sure you, uh, you like the video, share it, subscribe, comment down below, and uh, tune in next week for some more. We'll discuss some more competitions. We'll see you then.